Applying the Graniflex system. Step 1. Prepare your surface. Prepare concrete surfaces by sandblasting, shot blasting, or acid etching and pressure washing. Always neutralize when acid etching. Tape off all areas and objects needing protection using the appropriate specialty tape and masking paper. Step 2. Mixing Permaflex After opening the pail, premix permaflex with a drill and mixing paddle before adding catalyst and accelerator or separating for partial batches. This will mix any settled particles and ingredients. We recommend using a heavy-duty 1 half inch drill and large mixing paddle at slow speed. Add 1.6 ounces of catalyst per gallon. Add 6.4 ounces of accelerator per gallon for a slow set mix. Dry time of 4 to 6 hours at 70 degrees. Add 12.8 ounces of accelerator for a fast set mix. Dry time of 1 to 2 hours. Mix Permaflex, Catalyst and Accelerator at slow speed for 30 to 60 seconds or until fully blended. After mixing in the catalyst and accelerator, in states where it is legal, we recommend thinning permaflex 10 to 15 percent with xylene or other approved and tested solvents. Then mix for an additional 60 seconds. Thinning with xylene will make the permaflex much easier to work with. Never thin with a solvent blend or a solvent that contains traces of alcohol, which inhibits the curing of permaflex. Step 3. Apply Permaflex Prime Coat. Permaflex yields 180 to 240 square feet per gallon for each coat. Coverage as low as 180 square feet per gallon is possible when applying over porous substrates or heavily textured broom finishes. Permaflex will only cure properly at 10 mils or less. 10 mils is approximately 150 square feet per gallon. While wearing spike shoes, pour small puddles or ribbons onto the substrate. Using a 1 8 inch notched squeegee, spread permaflex over the substrate. Next, using a chip brush or small 4 inch roller, apply permaflex around the edges of walls and all other obstacles. Wet an 18 and 3 8 inch nap roller into the permaflex and then back roll the material across the floor, leaving a thin, even coat. Then let dry one to two hours at 70 degrees. It may take longer in cooler weather. Step four, apply Permaflex broadcast coat. Permaflex coats must be applied the same day. Do not start an application that you cannot complete to the broadcasting stage in the same day. First, apply the Permaflex broadcast coat using the same method as your Permaflex prime coat. You can also dip and roll the Permaflex broadcast coat out of an 18 inch paint tray. The most important thing before you broadcast is to ensure an even thin coat of permaflex to broadcast into. If the permaflex is uneven, it will absorb different amounts of the broadcast media, causing an uneven texture and color appearance. Second, while the permaflex is still wet, broadcast flakes into the wet permaflex until the point of rejection. Rejection is when the permaflex broadcast coat will no longer absorb any more flakes to stick into it. This will require one pound of flakes that will cover four to six square feet. With a bucket of flakes under one of your arms, reach into the bucket with your other arm and grab a handful. Throw the flakes up into the air to allow them to evenly disperse across the floor into the wet permaflex broadcast coat. Broadcasting flakes to rejection is not done slowly. It is a fast process in which your hand goes in and out of your bucket quickly. Grab and throw, grab and throw while walking across the wet permaflex in spike shoes, making sure you completely and evenly blanket the floor in a layer of flakes. Keep watch for shiny spots and broadcast with more flakes while the permaflex is still wet. Let dry two to three hours at 70 degrees. It may take longer in cooler weather. Step five, clean excess flakes. Remove excess flakes using a leaf blower or push broom. Push or blow the flakes into piles against a wall and then collect them with a large dustpan. 
Outside, this is more difficult, and extra push brooming and vacuuming is an acceptable alternative. For a smoother texture, use an 18-inch floor scraper, cross-hatching with the scraper across the entire area. Next, using your vacuum wand, vacuum in both directions, cross-hatching, moving the wand back and forth to both scrape and remove the remaining flakes at the same time. Step 6. Mixing Granaseal Granaseal has a very short pot life. Mix only what can be applied within a 10 to 15 minute time frame. Premix Part A and Part B before mixing or dividing into partial batches. Separate one Part A of Granaseal and one Part B of Granaseal. Pour each part into a mixing container and mix thoroughly with a drill for 60 seconds. Example, one half gallon mix equals one quart of A and one quart of B. Step seven, apply Granaseal top coat. Granaseal top coats must be applied the same day. Do not start sealing unless you can complete both seal coats of Granaseal the same day. Using a 3 8 inch nap, non-shed roller and a paint tray, saturate your roller. Apply a roller width path of Granaseal overlapping by one third on each additional row. Then cross hatch the surface with the roller in the opposite direction utilizing the same technique. Continue this cross hatching method across the area. Apply Granaseal at 160 to 180 square feet per gallon on the first coat. The first coat will require more sealer than the second coat. Let dry one to two hours at 70 degrees. This may take longer in cooler weather and is accelerated in warmer temperatures. Mix the second coat of Granaseal by adding one tablespoon of Get a Grip anti-slip additive per mixed quart of Granaseal. Apply the second coat of Granaseal as soon as the first coat is dry enough to walk on, using the same technique as the first coat. The second coat must be recoated within a two to four hour recoat window to achieve a monolithic bond. Please refer to our Material Safety Data Sheets, MSDS, and Technical Data Sheets, TDS, before using any concrete protector product for detailed explanations of how to safely use our products. If you have questions about safely using our products, do not hesitate to call us. Proper Personal Protective Equipment, PPE, is not an option, but an absolute necessity. No amount of time or cost savings is worth permanent injury or death. Please use all recommended PPE when applying our systems. If you have questions about appropriate PPE, do not hesitate to call us.